Hey folks, David Fine here from Keys Moths. We are going through a series of the giant moths of South Florida and the Florida Keys. Guys, today we are talking about a rare tropical beauty. This is Pseudosphinx tetrio. This frangipani moth, and I'll tell you why it's called that in a minute, is a very rarely seen adult moth. Uh, we more commonly see the caterpillars, which are super cool. I'll show you this in a minute. Uh, but guys, it's a monster moth and they live here down here in South Florida. And guys, I'm super excited. So as we go through this series, we're gonna show you all kinds of moths, but today we're focused on the frangipani moth. Guys, let's get to the video. Pseudosphinx tetrio, guys. This moth is a moth that is very rarely seen at lights. I mean, every now and then you'll see one come to a light, but this is this moth is very hard to find as an adult. You know, in fact, uh, we actually more commonly find the caterpillars. They're actually much more easy to find. And I'll show you why in a minute. But the 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 moth itself is pretty drab. And uh, actually, this one here, you can see the size of this moth. It's this is a big one. It's about seven inch wingspan almost. Male and females do look similar, but they are dimorphic. Males have a much more modeled patterning on the forewing than do females. They have a little bit more of a like a like a matte gray coloration. In fact, um, this is probably a little bit more typical of a, a tetrio pseudosphinx tetrio female from South Florida. Uh, it's got a matte gray forewing, whereas the males have more of a mottled darker coloration. Females are, are much larger, typically, in color, in uh, size, uh, but they are gray. They've got these, this little black rib cage thing going on in the, hind wing, or in the abdomen and a black hind wing. Underside, just gray, gray patterning. Uh, I've actually never seen them at flowers. They must feed on flowers, but they fly later on in the evening, and so these are not a twilight hummingbird type feeding moth. In fact, the only ones I've ever seen flying were on Big Pine Key as they were coming into my lights. And no, actually no name key, as they were coming into my lights. And it was late, 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 like almost two o'clock in the morning uh, when I actually saw them flying and coming into the, to the light sheet. So uh, this species probably flies super, super late at night, actually in the early morning, uh, early morning hours. So you can see the size comparison to the largest sphinx moth in North America, the giant sphinx. Um, this is, this actually, actually this specimen guys of Tetrio, this is a massive specimen. Uh, the, this giant sphinx is a little larger, but this is a big, big, big girl. In fact, most of the time, this is more of an average size Pseudo Sphinx Tetrio moth down here in Florida. Uh, you know, th these guys live throughout the Caribbean and the Central and South America too. So uh, they, they're varying in size throughout their range. But this is a typical South Florida size female Pseudo Sphinx Tetrio. Look at the size difference between that and the giant Sphinx. It's a large moth, but not quite a size of that giant Sphinx. All right, life cycle. Let's talk about the life cycle, guys. I'm going to show you my the page on my website. So pseudo sphinx tetrio, the tetrio sphinx moth. Guys, look at this caterpillar. Look at this thing. When your frangipani tree gets covered with this moth caterpillar, you know it because one day there's leaves, the next day there's not. Because this caterpillar is about seven, six, seven, eight inches long almost. Big, thick, Jet black caterpillar with yellow banding, bright reddish orange head with orange legs. They've got this big black whip tail thing going on on the, on the back end, that sphinx moth whip tail. And so the, the caterpillar is actually far more beautiful than the, than the adult is, uh, but it's, it's a phenomenal creature. Uh, we found them on Key Largo, Big Pine Key, and No Name Key. Adults seem to be more common in the fall, September, October. Uh, we, we've got one specimen in February. But um, look at this moth, guys. Look at this caterpillar. Adults are highly camouflaged. Here's an adult specimen on the, on the trunk of a mahogany tree. 
yeah, nobody's seeing that. That thing is super camouflaged. Um, adult, like caterpillars are ferocious eaters. And you can see here is a, a little bit of a video clip of this caterpillar eating the leaf of a frangipani tree. Frangipani, it's what the Hawaiians make their lays out of. The, the pr pretty flowers and uh, plumeria is what they're called. And they're used for all kinds of things and medicines and such and so. But the caterpillars will just mow down these big leaves. The, the plumeria does have a milky sap. And so a lot of times the caterpillars will chew the vein of the leaf before feeding to bleed the leaf of the plant. So that's a pretty cool habit that the caterpillars have. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, pupa, pretty typical sphinx moth pupa. They pupate underground. Once the caterpillars are done feeding, they'll crawl down into the ground and find that leaf litter and bury themselves and pupate there. I remember the first time, guys, that I saw these caterpillars, we had a frangipani tree in our yard and I was in the pool in the backyard and we found about 30 or 40 of them just all over the place and they were walking around. And the reason they were walking around is because they ate themselves out of house and home. There were no leaves left on the tree. Uh, so we picked them up, we went and found some other leaves and finished raising them and that was the first time I saw them. So uh, every now and then, uh, typically in the month of August would be the best time to look on your frangipani for these caterpillars. Uh, so when August comes around, you look on those trees and you look for these big black and yellow striped monsters on the frangipani trees. Super easy to find if you are lucky enough to get a tree that's infested. Uh, but every now and then in August, September, I'll get phone calls from people that are freaking out that these big caterpillars are killing their frangipani trees. But, uh, you know, fear not, the trees will grow back. Let the moths live, please. <laughs> hey, hope you enjoyed this video on the frangipani moth. I absolutely love this bug. And ever since, you know, seeing them, you know, as a kid, it's always been a cool thing to see their caterpillars. I can't help but to bring them inside, raise them, just look at them, photograph them, take videos. They are amazing. So guys, Give me a thumbs up on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications because when you hit the bell, you'll get notified every time we put out a new video on the butterflies and moths of South Florida. So uh, guys, shout out to the Southern Lepidoptera Society. It's a group of men and women that study the butterflies and moths of the Southern United States. I would love for you to become a member of that organization. Uh, I've been a member for, for gosh, over 20 years. And the link for their website is in my description and you can click it there and for about 35 bucks uh, a year, you can be a member and get newsletters delivered to you, invited to annual meetings and you get to chat with some really, really cool uh, guys and gals who really know their stuff on the bugs of the Southern United States. So guys, take care. Let's enjoy South Florida. Let's get out there and find some South Florida giants. Bye now.